Hello everybody, Shrouded Hand here. Today I'm going to talk about one of the most horrific psychological experiments ever devised. But to understand why it exists, it's important to look at the life of the man who invented it, Harry Frederick Harlow. Harry Harlow was born in 1905 in Fairfield, Iowa. Not much is known about his formative years, but in an unfinished autobiography, Harry describes his mother as not being a particularly warm or affectionate woman. The significance of this will become evident later on. Perhaps because of this lack of affection, he suffered from bouts of depression from a very young age. At school he didn't fit in, struggling to make friends, and so he created his own fantasy world in his mind. Every spare moment was spent drawing an imaginary land that he named Yazoo, which he populated with every type of fantastical creature that he could think of. Over time it became evident that he was of above average intelligence, and he developed a love for poetry and literature. In 1924 he attended Stanford University, studying English, but after the first year, his grades were so bad that he decided to switch his major to psychology. For some reason, this subject suited him a lot more. In fact, he excelled at it and went on to receive a PhD. Upon graduating, he took up a professorship position at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. By this time, Harry Harlow had lofty ideas of the kind of studies that he wanted to conduct. For this, he was going to need a space to carry out his experiments. At first, he tried to persuade the university to provide him with some lab space on campus, but when they refused, he moved his operation to a vacant factory building down the road. This would eventually become the Primate Research Laboratory a place where Harry reared his own breeding colony of rhesus macaques and psychology students earned their doctorates by conducting experiments on them. Hand rearing these macaques often meant that the infant monkeys were separated from their mothers at a very young age. Harry noticed interesting psychological changes in these separated infants. He began to think about the role that parental love may play in a child's development and devised his most well-known study, the Child Isolation Experiment. It was common belief among psychologists at the time that children only became attached to their parents because the parent provided nourishment. A mother showing affection towards a child was seen as a pointless and sentimental action, something that could even harm a child's development if they received too much of it. In order to test this theory, Harry separated newborn macaques from their mothers and placed them alone in a cage with two artificial surrogate mothers. One of these mothers Harry describes like this. The surrogate was made from a block of wood, covered with sponge rubber and sheathed in a tan cotton terry cloth. A light bulb behind her radiated heat. The result was a mother, soft, warm and tender. A mother with infinite patience. A mother available 24 hours a day. A mother that never scolded her infants and never struck or bit her baby in anger. Furthermore, we designed a mother machine with maximal maintenance efficiency, since failure of any system or function could be resolved by the simple substitution of black boxes and new component parts. It is our opinion that we engineered a very superior monkey mother. The other surrogate wasn't so comforting. It was simply a bare wire cylinder with a square impersonal face. But there was one major difference between the two surrogates. The bare wire mother provided milk, whilst the soft mother provided nothing but comfort. If psychologists were correct, the baby monkey would become attached to the mother that provided nourishment, but in fact the opposite happened. The monkey became attached to the cloth mother, only venturing to the wire mother when it needed food, before rushing back to the comfort of the terry cloth. This was actually a pretty important discovery at the time, 
and it did a lot to change the way we think of the role that affection and love plays in a human child's development. For the monkeys involved, however, the psychological trauma was devastating. As well as being deprived of any company for the first five or six months of their lives, they were subjected to other cruel tests. One involved exposing them to one of Harry's specially built scare robots, used to terrify the infant monkeys to see how they responded in the presence of their surrogate mothers. When one of these monkeys was eventually returned to live among the other rhesus macaques, the psychological trauma was evident. They were completely unable to interact with other monkeys, showing signs of extreme anxiety, choosing to huddle alone in the corner of the room instead of exploring their surroundings. Harry Harlow cared little for the animals he experimented on. He's quoted as saying, The only thing I care about is whether a monkey will turn out a property I can publish. I don't have any love for them, never have. I don't really like animals. I despise cats. I hate dogs. How could you like monkeys? Encouraged by his initial findings, Harry devised even more bizarre and cruel experiments. One device he called the Iron Maiden. This was another surrogate mother, which provided nourishment and comfort, but also dealt out punishment. This was to test the effects of an abusive parent on childhood development. The punishments the Iron Maiden dished out were numerous. Some of them would stab the monkey with metal spikes, others would blast them with cold air with such force that they were thrown across the cage, others would shower the infant with ice cold water. No matter what abuses the monkeys were subjected to, they would always return to the Iron Maiden for comfort. Despite all this, these surrogate mother studies weren't the cruelest experiments that Harry would devise. As the title of this video might suggest, he was about to come up with something much, much worse. In 1971, Harry's wife died of cancer and he fell into a deep depression. He was admitted to the Mayo Clinic and received electroshock treatment in an effort to alleviate his depression. When he eventually returned to the lab, according to his fellow researchers, he was never quite the same again. He was quieter, he didn't have the same sense of humour, his spark had gone. Around this time he changed the focus of his experiments. Instead of studying the effects of infant separation, he wanted to investigate depression, and for this he would need to create depressed monkeys. Now instead of separating the infants from their parents at birth, he allowed the monkeys to form natural happy bonds with their mothers. Then, at anywhere between three months and three years of age, he would take these happy monkeys and place them in his most sinister device yet, the Pit of Despair. The Pit of Despair was a tall metal tank shaped like an inverted pyramid with smooth sides that tapered down to a narrow point at the bottom. The roof was a cone that prevented the monkey from hanging off it. Monkeys would be placed alone into these chambers and, although they were provided with enough food and water, they would be given no other stimuli. Harry designed this device himself specifically to simulate what depression felt like, and I can see what he's going for, the feeling of futility, the shutting out of the outside world, the universe narrowing around you until you're confined within the hell of your own thoughts with no hope of escape. The device itself can be seen as a physical representation of mental anguish, kind of like a functional Edvard Monk painting. At first the monkeys would try to escape the pit, jumping up the sides to get a brief glimpse of the outside world before sliding down to the bottom, but after a few days they gave up entirely. In Harry's own words he describes it like this. 
Most subjects typically assume a hunched position in a corner at the bottom of the apparatus. One might presume at this point that they find their situation to be hopeless. He had succeeded in creating a device that made animals depressed. One of Harry's students reported that he could find no monkey that could resist the pit of despair. Even the happiest, most lively primates came out of it psychologically damaged. Most of the monkeys would spend between 3 and 12 months in the pit. There's even one report of a monkey spending 15 years in total isolation. Those that were in the pit for three months, although psychologically devastated, did show some signs of recovery. Six months or longer in the pit pretty much meant irreversible damage. Once they were let out of the pit of despair, life didn't get much easier for the monkeys. The ones that were in the pit for 12 months or more came out the worst, refusing to eat or move once released. Often they would just starve themselves to death. Harry wanted to test the effects that clinical depression would have on the parental instincts of the female monkeys, but after a stint in the pit they refused to mate ever again. To solve this problem Harry invented a new apparatus. This was a metal frame that the female monkeys would be tied to in a mating position, allowing a pack of male monkeys to mate with her freely. This did result in pregnancies. However, the results were pretty horrifying. If the mothers didn't simply neglect their children, they outright tortured them. As Harry says, not even in our most devious dreams could we have designed a surrogate as evil as the real monkey mothers were. In one case, a mother held her child's face to the floor whilst she chewed off its fingers and toes. In another case, the mother deliberately crushed her baby's skull. These experiments continued for a number of decades, and the primate research lab that he founded still operates to this day, although thankfully the pits of despair seem to be a thing of the past. Harry died in 1981 from health problems relating to his Parkinson's disease. His research is considered to be invaluable in the study of human development and mental health. There was a great public outcry once the details of his experiments came to light, and this led to the formulation of a new code of ethics when dealing with laboratory animals. I've tried to avoid the subject of morality in this video. Whilst I have no problem admitting I think these tests were cruel and pretty abhorrent, whether or not they were justified is really down to your own personal ethics. I'm not here to try and tell you how to feel about it. Anyway, I am interested to hear what you think of Harry and his experiments, so even though I don't have time to respond to all the comments, I do read them, so feel free to leave your thoughts. Shout out to everyone supporting me on Patreon and PayPal. I think I've said this before, but I always hate saying thank you in these videos because I think my monotonous voice makes it sound like I'm being sarcastic or unappreciative, but I really do mean it when I say thanks, so thank you, and I couldn't make this content without you. If you'd also like to support the channel, then you can check out the link on screen now. If not, there should be some other videos there for you to check out. If you're new here, then uh, why not subscribe? I make disturbing content like this on a fairly regular basis. Until next time, goodbye.